as uh, just raised before, we we and Ben uh, advise them that they shouldn't hook up to this main system because the pipes run for about a mile most efficiently. Um, we think the pipes will last forever, but if you put in a load like the Cornell load, which would be incremental, uh, it's going to put a lot, of, a lot more wear and tear on the pipes. So from REOC's point of view, we didn't think it was a good idea for them to hook in. And from Cornell's point of view, we didn't think it was a good idea for them to hook in because they want to recycle, they want to run the system and do the collections based on their schedule, not the resident's schedule. So what we did was provide them with a feasibility study for an independent system. We provided them uh, with a study for an independent system. An independent ABAC system there? Pardon me? An independent ABAC system at Cornell? Yes. Yeah, we provided that in 2012. It was on the original master plan, which has changed in 2012. I think it was about a $12 million capital investment. Um, and uh, they uh, said they didn't want to uh, implement uh, the system because they didn't want to put any more burdens on developers. Uh, because they were thinking, I guess, and this is an assumption, it's not a statement they made, uh, that they would expect the developers to pick up the incremental cost of, of the AVAC system. Um, David Kramer, to his credit, uh, who is one of the developers of uh, Southtown or Riverwall, is uh, specifically asked Cornell to reconsider once he was designated, because uh, he loves the system, he values it, he understands the benefit to the community and to the residents of his buildings, uh, and Cornell refused. But he did ask them to reconsider.